Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Um, I know it's been a little while since I had last uploaded. Um, got some stuff in the works when I want to do the A770 and A750 review. Unfortunately, for some reason, um, when I ordered them, I actually managed to get online fast enough before, I don't know, either the bots or scalpers got to it, and I got my order in. Um, it got lost in shipment. Um, so I just got offered a refund instead of replacing the item because they've been sold out. So unfortunately, the A770 and A750 reviews um, are going to be canceled for the time being until maybe I can get one. Seems like all the listings on eBay are listing them for like $300 more than what they're actually worth. So I'm going to kind of wait until I can maybe get another opportunity to grab that. Um, I also have some other stuff in the works as well. I ordered in a 13700K, so I'm going to be doing a video about that. I'm also going to be updating my personal rig with that um, processor. So I'm going to go through the whole process of upgrading, you know, maybe your 12th gen rig with a 13th gen processor and um, all the problems you might have while trying to do that. Um, so that'll be another cool video I got coming on. And then I also have a comparison of the 3060 and 3060 Ti, uh, mainly because in the last talking head video I did, kind of like this one, um, I really was very harsh on the 3060, but I want to kind of show in some real test results why I'm not a big fan of that card right now at its uh, at its price point. So I really wanted to compare it to the 3060 Ti because initially in that video I did recommend you know you spend the extra hundred dollars to to upgrade. But all that aside, I know you guys probably clicked on this video for a different reason. I wanted to talk about the 13th gen Intel processors um, compared to AMD's 7000 series and my personal thoughts on the whole, whole ordeal. Um, in a moment here, I'm going to actually hop on my laptop that's sitting here. I'm in the office today. Um, if there's any background noise, I apologize. Um, we're taking phone calls and stuff. But um, yeah, what I wanted to do was put some PC part picker builds together for you guys just so we can kind of compare pricing when it comes to going with 13th gen intel or going with um you know amd's 7000 series builds um but before we get into that i just want to like talk about um my general thoughts on them before even looking at builds i think when it comes to value right now 13th gen Intel stuff um, is a lot better. Um, generally speaking, I've been seeing uh, reviews where the performance on 13th gen stuff is better. The fact that you can use an older platform um, and save some money by buying like a Z690 board is a huge plus. You aren't tied down to, have to having to have DDR5. You can actually go with DDR4 memory still with the 13th gen stuff as well, which is super nice. And on top of that, you can be like me where you already have a 12th gen um, processor and you can really easily slot in a 13th gen one um, if you want to. Uh, like how on our website we sell, you know, i5 and i3 processors in a B660 board. I do believe even, especially the B660 board we're using, that MSI model in particular has some really good um, VRMs for... Um, you know, being able to deliver enough wattage for some of these higher wattage components like the 13th gen is. Um, I even think that some of these B60, B660 boards in the future, pretty surely are going to be getting BIOS updates that are going to allow you to put 13th gen, 13th gen stuff in them if they haven't already. Um, but yeah, and then with 7000 series, to me, you're almost kind of buying into hopefully the longevity. I think everybody hopes that this... Um, newest Ryzen platform is going to go on as long as the previous one did, where you can keep slotting in upgrades, you know, every, you know, other generation or so for the next like four or five years, like what you did before. I mean, there's no guarantee on that, but I think that that's kind of what you're buying into. Hopefully that's what they end up doing. Um, I do plan on doing a 7,000 series build. Um, and I actually think I'm going to be doing it for my girlfriend's build, which is another cool video that we're going to have coming up. Um, and the main reason being is I think once they come out with their 3D V cache, um, series, 
I'm going to upgrade the CPU that I'm going to be putting in there. I think I'm going to use the 7600X or the 7700X, which is like basically their cheapest model of CPU. But I'm hoping in a few months, um, because they have been already talking about maybe revealing it in January, I'm hoping within the next like five to six months that the 3DV cache models of some of these um, processors come out and that should just start, that should destroy gaming performance. So I feel like if I can get into the platform now, um, it's more of a plan to upgrade in the future. And I think that's the main benefit with the 7000 series is that thought that you can upgrade into the future with it and you're going to have that longevity. But anyways, I'm going to hop over to the computer now. Okay. Now that we're into PC part picker here, I think I'm going to start with a 13th gen build and just kind of see where I can go with it. Um, to me, the best value 13th gen processor, I mean, just like 12th gen, it's going to be a 13600K. Um, you know what? I think, I don't know. I kind of like going with the k skews, even though it is a little more expensive. It's kind of nice if you do any video editing at all, being able to use... Um, you know, the extra encoding power with the 13600K um, that it allows for you. I forget what the Intel software, or not software, I forget what it's called, um, but it basically can use the um, iGPU to help with uh, rendering videos along with your dedicated graphics card as well, um, which is kind of nice. Now, these are going to need pretty robust cooling. Um, just like the AMD stuff, honestly, those get very hot as well. And honestly, with AMD, your performance is tied to... Um, you know, if you can get really good temps, um, cause it'll just keep overclocking up until it gets to like 95 degrees Celsius apparently. Um, so that'll be kind of fun to test. I don't know if it actually makes a difference whether you have like a, well, like for the 7600 X, for example, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference using like a 360 millimeter AIO or like a 240 millimeter. Um, it might not, but it might. So that'll be kind of something fun, um, to test out. So I think I'm just gonna put like 120 millimeter. Like the this is kind of not it. I'd rather go with something cheaper. Corsair always has really expensive AIOs. Yeah, so is that one. Man, everybody goes with all the crazy expensive stuff, huh? Ah, this cooler master one. I mean, I'm just gonna toss like it in here, even though I don't think I'd go white, but that's more around the price range that I expect. And then I'm going to start with like a Z690 board um, just because I don't think the Z790s are very worth it. Um, like the Gen 5 um, NVMe usage and like the Gen 5 uh, PCIe usage is like not really um, that beneficial. Uh, we already, <laughs> like the cards already can't keep up with uh, Gen 3 even. So, like, Gen 4 is overkill, and Gen 5 is, like, major overkill. Um, I don't think you're going to see any difference having Gen 5 over Gen 4, or even Gen 3. I, I've seen um, seen tests and stuff where Gen 3 is also perfectly fine in terms of performance. So, uh, let's, like, sort them by price. I don't know. Actually, this board is not that bad, this MSI one. But let's get something maybe a little bit nicer. Maybe we can get... And this is really cheaper than like a tough board, perhaps. Now let's check to see if this is DDR5 or DDR4, because I think that's the other caveat here, is we want to, I kind of want to make sure it's a DDR5 board, yeah. I mean, you can get a Z690A for 180 bucks. You know what, I think that's actually pretty reasonable. I think this is a pretty good board. I, I think I'd personally maybe go with this Asus Tough one. Yeah, let's just use the Asus Tough. I, I like this board. It's the board I'm currently using, um, except for I have the DDR4 version, so. Uh, the memory doesn't really matter that much. Let's just go with the G Skill ones. Storage and the graphics card and everything. All this doesn't really matter, so. With DDR5 using a Z690, our current cost for entry level into this platform is 870 bucks. Um, let's just make a duplicate tab, I suppose. Let's see where we'd be at. I think I'll leave the Cooler Master 240 millimeter 
Let's see where we'd be at with like the 7600X. And the boards for this are really awfully priced right now. I don't even know. Like a B650 would be great, but even these aren't that awesome. I mean, once again, the Aces Tough one's pretty nice. I think I'll go with that. I guess the pricing isn't super different when you get like the tough gaming versions. I'm sure that uh, you could probably find better pricing. Like if I really went around and scoured like Newegg and stuff, I think there's some Z690 boards with which much, with much better pricing. Um, like cause they run sales and stuff all the time. Let's see. Oh, it's actually a little bit more expensive on the Intel side, surprisingly. I think it's more that I went with like this tough gaming board. I think I could have gone with a better, a better board and it wouldn't have, or a cheaper board and it wouldn't have been as bad. I mean, you can maybe make the argument, same argument with this one as well. But like I just know that these boards aren't fantastic. Like this Azrock one's not fantastic. I was kind of looking for one with Wi-Fi 2 to match it with, and that was like the closest thing. So maybe I proved myself wrong a little bit. But the 13600K also, I believe, outperforms the 7600X by and large. So there's that caveat as well. And this is also like a DDR5 platform. Like when I go and change this up to like a DDR4 platform, obviously we're going to be saving a lot of money because we're using DDR4 instead. Oh, I did not mean to do that on this one. My bad. Do, do, do. So let's go back to the 13600K. And then let's do a DDR4 board. Let's do like a B660. Well, no. Like I said, I still don't know if the drivers are updated, so we'll do Z690 still. I mean, you can get this one for 160 bucks. Hard to say. Maybe I'll filter them by if they have Wi-Fi or not, too. I don't know. This one's good. And then we go and we choose memory. Let's get some... Good old. Let's do the Corsair Vengeance 32 gig here. DDR, oh, that's a nice kit too. DR4 3600. So it's pretty nice kit. And yeah, I mean, you already save, I don't know, what is that, almost 100 bucks over the other build? Oh, I got to do the other build again. PC Park Picker doesn't like you having multiple things open at the same time. And honestly, right now, when you do tests with DDR5, it's not like it is, like, destroying um, DDR4 yet. I mean, I think we're going to be starting to get there where you're going to want to move to DDR5. So it, that's kind of like the whole argument is, like, how far into the future... Are we gonna, yeah, there we go. How far into the future are you really planning? Um, are you really planning for... Let's do the B650 again. Just put in the same board. And then we'll just use that same G skill kit. So yeah, 834 to 760. So what is that? 40 plus another 34. So 70. So 70 bucks basically you're saving. This is not a ton, but like I said, you're not getting a huge performance gain. I also did pick a pretty decent Corsair set of, uh, of memory as well. It's more expensive than what you could get. I wanted to like match a 32 gigs um, on here, but honestly, like this is like super baseline for 210 bucks. Um, you can get like cheaper uh, with like DDR5. I think it's 5,600. 
it's a little bit cheaper than this 210, but not by a whole lot. So like some top end RAM for DDR4 is like 120, where some middle of the road, like just normal DDR5 RAM, or at least the recommended specs for RAM. I don't know if people have done like a whole lot of testing of DDR5 yet to know like what should be like the best value um, yet, but this is what they recommend and that's like over almost a hundred dollars more. So yeah, we could like go way cheaper on the RAM here too and get like a 16, uh, like a 16 gig kit, um, 3200 CL16 for like probably 50 bucks and we could shave off another $70 on the cost here, um, which is really all you need to game. Um, I mean, I could keep going through builds, but I think I'm going to call it there for today. I just kind of wanted to like briefly go over some of my thoughts on this stuff. I think both choices are excellent right now. I mean, they're both going to kill gaming performance. I just think right now, 13th gen is better value if you're just looking for today. If you're kind of trying to like look for the future, 7000 series is pretty good, but I always am a little bit wary of recommending people to like try to future proof their build because trying to be future proof can sometimes just end up being a big waste of money <laughs> in the long run. Um, Cause in reality, things are going to keep advancing. You're never going to fully future proof your build when you're always going to be a step behind basically. Cause there's going to be new stuff every like six months to a year. So anyways, that's just basically my thoughts. Um, sorry if it's a bit rambly and a bit off the cuff. I just kind of really wanted to get a video out there cause it's been a little while. I'm going to have much better content coming pretty soon in the future, but I appreciate y'all for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video, I hope.